uh, for this particular client, previously I've done some work for him, and we submitted a couple of offers, but unfortunately, uh, these offers were not accepted. Let's see here. This is the client for whom I have previously prepared two offers and submitted. Uh, you know, when you set up a new folder for a buyer, uh, instead of uh, naming the folder using the property address, it might not be a bad idea to name the folder using the client's name because he's going to be submitting multiple offers. If his first offer is not accepted, you'll try the second time on a different property and a third time on a different property which is another reason why I named the folder using the client's name. Because previously, I would have entered the uh, party's name. Uh, it turns out that the wife is not joining him in the purchase. Uh, the offer will be strictly in his name, but I'm still gonna keep the wife's name as the case. Now, these are the two sellers that w I'm going to delete because uh, uh, the offers were not successful. So I would delete this from the previous side. Uh, and this is the previous side. Uh, Let's bring over this one to delete that. Uh, nothing to input for the escrow officer or title office. So I will delete the sellers and the last listing agent. So as you can see now, all we have is just the buyers and myself. Don't worry about the escrow officer, title company, home warranty company. And now I can proceed to uh, input information for the property I'm interested in. I'll start with the property tab. Let's go ahead and click the property tab. This was the last property that I input. I'm gonna need to input a new property uh, there are two ways to do this. I can manually input the information here, or I can use MLS Connect. But for, in order for MLS Connect to work, uh, your, ML, uh, your zip form must be linked to the MLS site that you, uh, that you subscribe to. Uh, for whatever reason, my MLS Connect does not take me to uh, the Pro MLS uh, website. There's no IDS between my zip form and Pro MLS, so I'm not able to do the MLS Connect. But if you're able to do the MLS Connect, all you got to do is to click here, and then click the MLS uh, that is connected to your uh, zip form. As you can see, my MLS is connected to CR MLS. I think this is the East Bay MLS. And this is Sender Core, which is uh, San Diego. I don't have uh, Pro MLS. If I had Pro MLS, I can just click Pro MLS here and then input the MLS uh, number and then click Find. You will find me all the uh, information concerning this listing, including the address, the CD state, list of price, postal code, everything. Such that if I click Import, everything will be imported into this page. I don't have to type it. Unfortunately, in this case, uh, certainly there is a problem that I have to fix. Uh, eventually, I'm gonna get ProMLS in here, but right now, I don't, so I'm gonna close this. So, uh, I'm just gonna manually input it, but before I do that, a couple of things here I wanna do. Uh, I wanna open up the CRMLS website. I found it. Okay, let's click it. In your case, you might be using the Paragon or 4MLS, whatever MLS that you want, send the call. Uh, I, I just use CR MLS so much that I'm more, more comfortable navigating around CR MLS. Reason I went to uh, CR MLS, uh, actually, you know what? Maybe I should go to uh, ProMLS. Uh, let me go to ProMLS. Let me close this one. 
I will go to full MLS. Uh, oops. I think I screw up something there. Oh, no. I think I have to go back in here. Okay. Uh, let me go to... MLS because this is a property in San Jose. This is the link for signing in for Pro MLS. I pin my uh, ID number. Uh, that's actually Santa Max uh, license. So I'm now on uh, ProMLS website because the listing is actually on ProMLS, but it really doesn't matter uh, whether I use your MLS or ProMLS, as you will see later on. All I'm interested in is to go to the Realist uh, page. If I go to the Realist page, it gives me the property information that I need from the assessor's record. Okay, I don't know why it's so slow. Uh, maybe I have to go to another. Maybe I have to go to CRMLS. Let's see if it works better than uh, CRMLS. Let's go to CRMLS. Uh, for CMLS, the user ID is just your member number, and this is my member number. My password. Once I'm CMLS, I can click the matrix. And I go to real list again. Okay, voila. So I got this page that I need. The reason I'm coming in here because if you're preparing an offer, uh, you will need the seller's name. And the best way to get the seller's name, oops, what happened there? Okay. Is to go to the real list. And if I just punch in the address. One four one seven Gordon. Right. And that's in San Jose. And search. Okay, I got the page that I need. And this is where I find the owner's names who will be the sellers of the property. Uh there are two names here, so I will need uh two names on my uh div form. So I copy from here. Uh, I will put the property information later. How about I go back to parties first? And uh, click new. Solo one. And, well, you know what? Excuse me. Based on the last name part first, because I can always cut, paste, cut, and paste. Michael T. Lee is the first seller. I don't need the email because normally 
uh, if you don't represent that party, you, you shouldn't have that party's email anyway. Okay, so I'm going to save that. I got the first seller's name in there, so I'm going to add the second seller. So I got seller two. And I'm going to copy the name of seller two, uh, which is this name right here. And of course, you paste in the last name, and then you cut, paste, and here, cut, paste. So I got seller two's name in here. Great. So that's done. Next, I need to get the listing agent's information here. As I explained to you earlier, if you have uh, MLS Connect, uh, all of these names will be set up here automatically. You don't really have to do much. That's why you see how important uh, MLS Connect is. But since I don't have that to pro MLS, uh, which I have to fix later, I'm entering this thing uh, manually. So I'm going to look for, for the listing agent. And of course, I'll come back here. And uh, now I'm going to need to use the uh, Pro MLS. I should be using Pro MLS. So uh, that's Pro MLS uh, homepage. How about uh, I look for the MLS uh, listing first. Let's go to matrix search. Uh, no. uh, enter the MLS here. Do I have MLS number? Oh, actually, I don't. Let me see if I can find the MLS number here. Actually, in real life, sometimes you can find the MLS number. Okay, if you can find the MLS number, great. Just get it from here. I do not have the MLS number here, the F4. I'm going to have to look for it uh, manually. Okay. Now, how do I look for the MLS number manually? Let me close the report here, and I will go back to the uh, Pro MLS uh, website. How about I go back here? Yeah, uh, it's giving me an error message. Unfortunately, I can't I can't access that. Uh, okay, now this is from the uh, Pro MLS website. As you can see, you can. Uh, oh, Rita has got the MLS number. Rita, can you flash? Can you uh, tag uh, this uh, again? What's the MLS number? Oh, you know what? Uh, actually, I can find the MLS number through here. I should be able to find it through here. There's no reason not to be able to find that. Maybe because I accessed it from CRMLS earlier. It, there's no link, but how about I try this one? Okay, I'm I'm on the, you see, I see the property already. This one right here, right? And uh, it is currently listed for $909,000. Uh, and uh, here's the owner information which we got earlier, and the property address, of course, and uh, 
Did you get my MLS number, Kenny? Uh, it's right here, Lita. Actually, I can just take the link and open it. Thank you. Okay. And uh, you can see there are two of them. The one that's 909,000 is the one that I needed. So I'm going to take that one, right? Here, I should be able to find the agent's information. You see this agent right here? Let me click her. See the agent's information, agent's name and the broker's name and everything, right? So I got the agent's name, I'll copy that. Okay. So let's go back, uh, I got the agent's name. So I get uh, agent name, the licensing name is here, basically here. And uh, well actually, this is the full name, so I'm just gonna leave it there, right? And uh, what else do I need? The agent's license number, so I can get it from here. Copy. It would be so much easier if you use MLS Connect, you don't have to type any of this. Uh, agent's number, I paste it here, right? And then that's the agent's phone number. So I'm going to copy it. Uh, agent's phone number. So I've got an agent's number. And this is the agent's uh, email. Copy that. Copy email address. And I can just paste it here as agent's email. Right. Next thing I need will be the address of the broker. So this is the broker name, so I'm going to copy the broker name. Yeah. Uh, this one says home phone number. Maybe I should cut it. And place here. Oh, agent cell phone number. Oh, the cell phone number. That's probably the cell phone number. Okay. The rest of the information, I get it from a. I need broker's information. Uh, best is to just kind of click this link for the broker information. So I got the broker address. So let me go ahead and copy that. That's the broker address. Alex Lowe is the broker. Giant uh, Realty Inc. is the broker. So the broker address, put it here, paste. And uh, I need the CT. Let me go ahead and just kind of cut this and paste it here. And then uh, state is just California. I'm going to need to cut this and put the zip code here. Okay, remove the comma. So I got the broker address. I don't have the broker facts. Let's see what the broker facts is. Uh, here's the broker facts. Let me go ahead and copy that. Paste.
So now I have the broker fax. Uh, the office ID, sometimes you'll be able to put the office ID. What happens if I put the broker office ID here? I haven't tried that yet. Let's see what happens. Uh, that's the broker code. That's probably the broker ID. Let's check it out. Office. If I put the broker ID here and paste it, okay, and uh, usually I did leave this blank. I'm not interested in designing the rest of the email. Okay. And then the broker phone, uh, I suppose you can put the office number here. Uh, let's see what the office number is. Uh, this is the office number, so I'm just going to copy and paste. See here, that's the broker phone. That's the broker. Okay, uh, this is really not that essential. Usually I leave it blank. I don't really do anything about it. This same thing with this. I don't, if I need to input it manually, I'll just input it manually. Uh, also, sometimes you may be able to import this, but let me go ahead and save this first. Of course, I now have uh, the broker, the listing broker, myself, seller one, and my buyer. Uh, actually, it's just going to be the husband submitting the offer. Okay, so now I have the party's name. I just need to input the property information, which unfortunately I have to input manually because I don't have the uh, MLS Connect or Pro MLS. And of course, this is in San Jose, Santa Clara. Uh, let's see what the zip code is. Uh, go back to uh, the, the real estate page. That should give me the uh, zip code. Can somebody tell me the zip code quickly? Oh, right here. 95131. 95131. Thank you, Rita. You're welcome. Okay, let's go back and put in the zip code. 95131. I got it. 95131. Okay, I got that. And something else you should fill out here. If you are a selling agent, uh, there's something important that you're gonna fill up. Now we're gonna we don't put this uh, purchase price because this is the uh, not the right purchase price. Uh, my client wants to put twenty thousand dollars less than the listing price uh, because uh, we've already received the disclosure. There's quite a bit of work to do. So if you subtract uh, twenty thousand dollars, wouldn't that be uh, eight eighty nine? Will be my purchase price, eight eight nine zero zero zero. Okay. Uh, the closing date. Uh, we're gonna make the closing date. How about now? This is a jumbo loan because it is gonna be a jumbo loan. Uh, I better give myself forty days. Uh, I spoke to my lender. It doesn't look like they can close in in twenty days. Now he told me ten extra days required for jumbo loan. So a minimum I need is 30 days to close on a jumbo loan. So to be safe, I think I'll put 40 days uh, just in case. So 40 days from today will put me right around August 23rd, right? So I'm gonna put August 23rd as the, uh, like, you know what, I don't wanna put the closing date. I'm just gonna say uh, 40 days from acceptance, okay? All right. So this is very important. If you forgot to do this one, you have to manually input the date of contract on every single page on the auction. So make sure you got this uh, taken care of, okay? Rita, pay attention to this one. Okay.
And the amount of the deposit is 3%, right? I'm going to put uh, 3%, so put down my calculator. Which is uh, eight eight nine zero 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 times point oh three, uh, twenty six thousand six hundred and seventy two six six seven zero oh, is my initial deposit. Now some of you uh, got confused uh, about increased deposit. You do not do increased deposit at all unless you have situation where you have. Uh, additional deposit you have to put because if you put more deposit here, it might create complication. Now, the loan that you get from the bank is not increased deposit. That goes under the uh, balance of, no, that goes under the financing portion. And then the remainder of your down payment goes under additional terms or additional funds to close or whatever, balance of uh, down payment, whatever. You do not put that amount in the increased deposit. I've seen some of your uh, offer, you actually put that amount in the increased deposit and that is wrong, okay? You shouldn't do that. Uh, offer date, we'll put today's date, okay? I'm assuming that he will sign the offer today, that's why I'm putting uh, today's date. I leave the offer time blank because I don't know. Amount to finance. Uh, it's ten percent of, uh, so it'll be ninety percent, right? We want to finance uh, ninety percent. Eight eight nine times point nine. We want to finance uh, eight hundred thousand and one hundred dollars. So that's the amount to finance. I don't know what the year bill is, to be honest with you, and you don't really need it for the offer. Possession date, we leave it blank because we usually use the default. And now normally if you do the MLS Connect, all of this information will be automatically uh, populated. You don't even have to input it. But you do not need to input it uh, for purposes of the preparing the offer, so don't worry about it, okay? And uh, I'm gonna need to save this thing. Okay, so now I'm ready to do my document. First, now previously I've done uh, an offer for other properties, so now I'm using the same document that I used before. Uh, you will see that the new information will be populated into the form right now, so I don't have to type everything. Uh, as I open up the offer, you should see that everything is automatically imported. This is my, and I don't think she should be a, a uh, I do not think, I think she is not, let's see here, is she gonna be my buyer? Uh, yes, she is, but the husband is going to be the only person on the loan, so I'm keeping her name here. Okay, you got Santa Max name, it's got my license number, it's got my name, so it's all set. Uh, remember the, Somehow it doesn't can, have the, can I, yeah. Can you double check the buyer's name? Who, who is that? That's the buyer's name. The buyer seems like not correct, right? Uh, yeah. No, 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 oh, Ma Chiang okay. is the buyer. Ma Chiang is it one is? of the buyers. Okay, all yeah. right. And then Wang Xian is the other buyer. Except that I'm missing the, the second seller's name and I don't know why. Let's go back and check uh, something here. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't auto populate. Let's see here. What happened here? Oh, I don't have a seller two, right? Something happened because I don't have seller two. Let's go back and put in the information for seller two. I forgot to save seller two apparently. So let me go ahead and add seller two. It is very important you set it up right or else you're doing a lot of work, okay? Uh, seller two, I believe her last name was uh, Wu. Can't remember what her last name was. Anybody Malina, M-A-L-I-N-A. -A. Okay, and then M-Y is the middle initial. Okay, Malina, okay, M-A-L-I-N-A. -A. And uh, I believe M-Y is like the initial. M-Y, correct, yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. 
and we'll save cell number two. You see, once cell number two is saved, if you come back here, go back to the document. Uh, you should be able to see seller's name imported into the form. You see, now the seller's name is imported here, so that's why the setting up is very important. If you don't do it right, there's a lot of work for you. That's the agency disclosure. It's all uh, one package, so you will never forget about the agency disclosure. Possible representation. Uh, this is a becoming. This has become a standard form now. Uh, there was a lawsuit involving uh, uh, this particular issue, so the association is making this form a mandatory form now. So you don't have a choice. It's already built into the package. And on this form, you see the seller's name, buyer's name, and uh, unfortunately, uh, you see I did this. Therefore, it's giving me this. So I need to go back and change some things there. Let's save that first. I think the somehow the uh, broker ID is actually the uh, license number. So I don't want I don't want this here. Okay. Uh, if I see, I do not have the broker's license number. Uh, how about I get the broker's license from the MLS. So if I come back here, get the broker's license number. That's the broker license number. That is the number that I need. Mm -hmm. When it says broker ID, you actually put the uh, license number of the broker. So I'll put the uh, broker ID. I think this is where you put the license number. Let's see what happens if I put the broker license. Let me see. Uh, there's something else that is missing here. Let me go ahead and take care of that. Is the uh, business spec number. So if I come back here, I should be able to find the business uh, spec number. That's the business spec number. So I'm just going to copy. Yes. Okay, now I believe uh, I have the information I need. Okay, go back to form. Document. Come back to form. All right, you can see once I make those changes, it will automatically make all those changes for me. You see that? And see, now I have the broker license number, but I don't have the agent's license number. Don't know why. See here, let's see what happened here. Because I think I did input the agent's license number. You see the agent's license number here, somehow the system does not import it automatically. Uh, well, you know what? How about I try it this? Should be below agent the... ID? You yeah, think agent ID yeah. might be the one? Okay. All right, so the agent license number, agent ID is the same thing, right? So if I do that, let me see if you pop it. Okay. Now go to document. Document. Yep. Yep, it's right here. So the agent ID is actually the agent's license number. So if you do that, uh, you'll be able to, to populate everything without typing anything. That's kind of nice. So uh, set this up right, and the job will be a lot easier. Okay, now we go into the offer. You see how the date is actually populated? Because I set this up on property. You don't have to type it every time, and then you see the buyer's names, and that's the property address. You see, if I had used uh, MLS Connect, the APN number will automatically show up here. See, that's why it's so important to have the MLS connect, which I didn't have. Uh, here it says 35 days on a jumbo loan. I think, uh, wait a minute, let me think about it. Do I want 
40 days or do I want 35 days? Uh, this particular lender that I work with, they can actually close a conforming loan in 20 days. And then for jumbo loan is 30 days. Uh, if I put 35, that's probably not very safe. I put 40 days. Yeah, be careful about jumbo loans. Uh, they tend to take longer uh, class, okay? Because uh, they may have to do some manual underwriting. Uh, now you're just double checking. Now this is uh, Giant Realty. Now this was previously checked by me, so it stays the same. So sometimes you have to check it. So this is, make sure, a lot of you forgot about checking the access here, checking the boxes here. So I have to do it manually for you, for you. Don't forget to check this, okay? This is very important because this, this confirms the agency relationship. Now the, uh, uh, this act is automatically put in by you, uh, to, uh, for you by zip form, so that's done for you. Uh, here is the deposit amount, which I already input in the property uh, page. And here's the loan amount. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, what's my loan uh, amount? The amount is not right. Yeah, it doesn't look right, does it? Okay. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Because this was from a previous, uh, previous offer, so I have to kind of uh, change that. So eight zero zero one zero one zero zero. So I have the proper loan amount now. So the rest of it, which is the rest of the down payment, is uh, this amount here: sixty-two thousand two hundred thirty plus uh, twenty-six thousand six seventy. If you add the two number, it should come up with ten percent. Okay, now that's about ten percent. So. My client, my buyer is putting a 10% down. Uh, he's been pre-approved, he's an engineer. Uh, he's got W2, uh, looking good, 800 credit score. Uh, usually I don't make any changes here. Now, this will be contingent upon appraisal and there is a loan contingency, so I'll leave it here. Now, loan contingency removal, uh, Many sellers insist that you remove it quick. And I believe for this one here, uh, I'll put 14 days from now because normally uh, when they've already spent about 14 days in the deal, if you need an extra week, most sellers will give it to you because they've already wasted that 14 days. So there's already uh, a price that they paid uh, by, giving you, by giving you 14 days to make up your mind on the phone. And usually, I, if I need an extra week, I just ask for extra. Most sellers will give it to you. It's not really a problem. But if you put down 21 days, it's not very competitive. So put down 14 days. Here, uh, uh, we don't have any uh, issue about buyer wanting to uh, sell that property. It's not a contingency. Sale or buy property is not to me, so I don't fear this out. But if it is, uh, you got to take care of that. Uh, these access are automatically uh, checked by you. Now, previously, now the, the SBSA is not a standard, it's not in the package. I check it here because I'm going to do an SBSA uh, to be signed. SBSA is pretty much a mandatory form. Uh, usually, if it is not prepared by the buyer, seller may prepare it. But to save time, I like to kind of get that form all signed and ready to go when I present my offer. Instead of forgetting about the form and having to go back and do one, so it's better to do it up front. Okay? Uh, this particular buyer does not have a lot of uh, uh, unusual contingencies, so it's very easy for me to put together this offer. Now, on the uh, NHT, Usually this is what I write. Uh, you know, I don't really care who they use for MHT. I'll just say provider of seller's choice. Okay. And I always make them pay for all the government requirements and retrofit. So all this will be checked by uh, seller. Previously, I've already input this. You see, you see the benefit of uh, reusing the same form uh, for the same buyer because you're making offers after different offers on different properties, but these terms are pretty much the same. Here, I've already previously checked seller pay, okay? 
we don't know. Uh, you have to kind of look at the custom and practice in uh, Santa Clara County. So sometimes uh, buyers pay, sometimes sell. I think it's seller in uh, Santa Clara. So it's a seller's choice of escrow company. Uh, now, as we turn more and more into uh, a buyer's market, you might want to put something like that. Subject to uh, a buyer's uh, reasonable approval. You see, if you don't do that, then whoever that they pick, you have no say in it. Basically, you just accept whoever they pick. But if they pick somebody that you really, really hate, then uh, at least this one here gives you the right, right to reject it. Now, as far as uh, how sophisticated the sophisticated seller is, most of the time they are not that sophisticated. So this will not kill the deal, but uh, for right now, I'll leave it like that. Okay, but you can certainly add that. If it becomes a no, it becomes a buyer's market. You don't make the, you don't give the choice to the seller. You tell you tell them who you want to be the escrow company and who you want to be the title company. Right now, we're still kind of in the seller's market, but slowly uh, transitioning into the buyer's market. Uh, I make the buy uh, seller pay for county transfer tax. That's mandatory. City transfer tax usually I put uh, if any because we don't know if there's any uh, city uh, transfer tax. And I make the um, seller pay for HOA fees to prepare the documents if there's any HOA. Uh, and uh, uh, no transfer fee, private transfer fee, and seller will pay for home warranty, service provider, or seller's choice. I want air conditioner in the package. If you have pool, make sure you, you check the pool box. And, uh, you know, we, my, previously, that particular house, actually, the purchase price comes with a and washer. This one I don't know, so I'm going to uncheck that for now. Okay? I don't think it includes those. But the stoves definitely on the stove. Uh, items excluded from sale, we don't know anything yet, so we don't want blank. Now, as far as, uh, closing of possession, usually I leave the standard. I don't change anything here unless there's a reason to change anything. So usually it's the standard. However, if you're buying a property that is tenant occupied, uh, uh, you should indicate what you want to do with the tenant. Uh, okay. If an investment property, certainly you want the tenants to stay unless you have good reasons to not want the existing tenants, such as bad tenants. Kenny, is a refrigerator included as part of the purchase? Usually it's not, unless uh, the listing indicates it's included, because refrigerator will be personal property and not real property. Okay. And uh, for inspection, usually I use seven days. You don't need so many days of inspection. Now, as you can see, the market is changing. We're slowly transitioning into a buyer's market. Uh, I think you still want your buyer to have the inspection contingency, okay? It's not as competitive as um, a couple of years ago, even last year. I think uh, uh, the market is softening a little bit. Okay, so I'll put uh, seven days here for the inspection contingency. If you do not need to change anything, don't change it. Just leave everything as default. And the rest of it is just the E sign, right? So, right. And same thing with this, usually I leave uh, the default, but sometimes uh, uh, you may want to give the seller only 24 hours. In some situation, like for example, you want to make multiple offers, you don't want to wait the full uh, three business days before you can submit the next offer. You want the seller to give you an answer within 24 hours. Sometimes that would be a very good strategy uh, to, uh, to, to put some pressure on the seller to get back to you. So you don't always have to use the default. 
24 hours uh, will work very good uh, sometimes. And uh, now if you have a buyer in a representative capacity, you want to check here, for example, like in the trust or corporation. That was what we use another one. You see how this information is automatically populated? I don't even have to type anything. Everything is all important. You just have to verify the information. If you do everything correctly, you can actually generate this thing like in 10 minutes or 15 minutes. It will save you a lot of time. See, the, the address is automatically populated here. And then uh, you just double check, make sure all the names are there. And uh, normally, if you're doing it for the first time, double check all the information, make sure you have everything here. So this is complete, so I'm gonna save that. But I still need to do the SBSA, so I come back here. And uh, let's see if I have an SBSA already. I think I probably have an SBSA already. See, I have the SBSA right here. Here's the SBSA, and I just need to change the date. Uh, it, this is actually July 14th, so change it to today's date, okay? Because the SBSA is not a standard as part of the package, the date does not automatically populate. You have to change the date, okay? It's not standard within that offer package. SBSA, you only have to worry about, not, notice the SBSA, we don't have any initials required at the bottom, except for the last page. If you look at the last page, uh, it's got all my information populated. That's great, so that's all taken care of, right? All I gotta do is just uh, save that. So now, I'm ready to send the forms to my client to e-sign, just click the e-sign, right? And because it also requires my signature, I will be the first signer. And then the uh, husband will be the second signer. And wife will be the third signer. And I'm gonna click done, okay? You see, double check all the emails, make sure you have the correct email. See, this is the right sequence. I go first, then the husband, and then the wife. Okay, and then I click next. Okay, once I'm on the e-sign page, I need to double check, make sure all the places that, need, that are required to be initial is in fact initial. For example, uh, this one requires no initial. Let me worry about it. This must be the SBSA. I don't want to do that. Let me quit. I, uh, there's something else I can do better. I can actually have them e sign uh, both forms. Hold on. I'm back here. I'm back here. All right. E sign. You click e sign, right? And uh, if you created something and didn't start, you just simply say create it. So I'm not going to create, I'm, I'm not going to have them e sign this alone. I'm going to create a new one, and uh, you see these boxes here? You check all the forms that you want to e-sign, so you can have them e-sign all at once. So I check this form, the so purchase, the offer, and then I check the SBSA. So I click uh, next, right? And then I click myself as the first signer, uh, husband second, wife third, and I say done. And then I click next.
Okay, now it takes me to the offer. I just double check. Make sure those places that require signatures actually does have. You want to make sure this is provided, that, that provided, okay? Make sure. The rest uh, has we, nothing to do with you, yes. Have we wiped out the arbitration part? Uh, I think these days I don't care anymore. I'm just going to leave it in there. Not anymore? Okay. Yeah, and and also, uh, you have mentioned about uh, uh, make sure to date the contract on top left and top right. Yeah, which I did. I showed you earlier. You show it. You see in a minute. Hold on. Here. Okay. That's automatically done for you through the property page, actually, because that's where you input the contract. Now uh, we got the agency disclosure, and then make sure everything that requires signature, you have this highlight, right? This highlight, or else uh, they they will not be signed. You see the date on the this one here, date prepared. This date is actually input in the property page. Once you input that, it will automatically be imported into the form as the contract. Mm -hmm. That's the top. Yeah, this one right here, that's what I'm talking about. You see, when, I, when I review your form, I do not see the date prepared. Okay, because so, you do not input that information in the property page. Okay. How about top uh, uh, right? Uh, I can't hear you. Make Which sure one you is see for top right. Top right, there's nothing on top right. Okay, because you, earlier you mentioned make sure the date is top. I mean, uh, to put the date on top left and top right. If I say top right, it was an error, so it should be left only. Okay. All right. Now this is bias initial. You see, this it's already put in by a zip form. Uh, you don't have to manually put that one in there. You just need to double check and make sure it's there. So, and you want to do it correct the first time because if you miss a initial, it creates extra work for you. You have to go back and get them and start another e sign. That's just too much work, right? So when you do it, double check, make sure everything is correct before you send it, okay? For e sign, see all the pages that need to be initial. System should have done it for you already. And uh, sometimes I even lazy to check it because I know it's there. See that? If something is not there, it's a mistake and it should be corrected. Uh, this one is not there for some reason. So I have to manually drag this one here down here, right? So it's good to check always. You never know. Okay, here's bio two. Make sure you highlight the light right by it, okay? Or else you're gonna get the wrong initial here. All right, so this one should be here. That's done, okay? Which which uh, item is this one missing? Uh, it's a page seven. For whatever reason, the zip form did not provide for the initial. Mm -hmm. uh, page seven of the uh, California residential purchase agreement is missing initial. You see the liquidated damages initial is here, which is important. Now the arbitration one, uh, Rita was saying, we used to manually take them out. That was because I, I'm not a big fan of arbitration, but these days I don't care anymore. Just leave that one in there. The system gives okay. that to you, so I think we just leave that in there. We're not gonna change that. All right, that's okay? good. And then the bottom initial, uh, say this, you see, it's very strange. Uh, page seven, it did not give it to you, but page eight, it gives it to me. So I don't have to do anything. I just need to double check, make sure all the initials are there. Ah, now I'm on this page where uh, a signature, you got a buyer signature here, which is good, right? And uh, 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 that's for the seller. And then this part here is actually for you, okay? And the system set it up for you already. And you see now the buyer's initial is on the right, okay? Not on the left anymore, so. Anyway, the buyer's advisory, 
you should have the bias uh, signatures all set up. Okay. So this is complete. So I'm going to uh, save it. We'll save that. Okay. And uh, now you only finish one form. Don't don't click send yet. You have another form. So make sure you take care of the other form first. So now you have the other form, okay? All right, check the uh, initials and signature for the other form. Let me move it to the middle. This particular form, I know the form so well, I don't have to check every page for initials because initials are not required on every page for the SBSA. Only a signature is required on the last page, so I'm going to go all the way to the last page, okay? Make sure the initials, the, the signature uh, all set up to go. As you can see, signatures all set up, so this is done. So uh, save that, okay? So this is all saved. Now, for offer, you just need the SPSA and the offer package. Uh, and then if you have uh, a trust or a LLC or a uh, operation, a business entity, you need a third extra form. That is the representative capacity form. So don't forget that form if you have such a capacity, uh, such an entity. But since I don't, I don't have to include that, that form. So at what most you will only have a representative capacity. Capacity? Yeah. Okay. So at most you only have three forms, usually only two forms. Uh, to prepare to set up for e-sign to present an offer. Now, once the, your client, now if you click uh, send here, as you can see, it will now, now I'm ready to send, so I'm going to click send, okay? And then uh, click send now, okay? Since I'm the first signer, it will go into my email for e-sign first. If I open up my email, Okay, I've already heard it coming in. Okay. Oh, not yet. It hasn't come in yet. So sometimes it takes a few moments to come in. Okay, now it has not come in yet, so uh, I'll wait for it to come in. Now once it comes in, uh, there's a sequence uh, uh, that you go through to, to do the e-sign. Some of you already know how to do that, so uh, I don't have to show you. But uh, that's pretty much uh, the entire process. Uh, I don't need them. Close it. I do not need them. And, yep, let's see here. Did it just come in? You see, it just came in. So you get something like that in your email. So you click open, and it says to access your document, click here. If you are using a digital sign for the first time, you have to set up your signature exemplar, and then you have to put in your, uh, set up your password. Now, you need to click the accept because you need to give legal consent to e-sign, so click next. And then it asks for your password. So for me, I already set it up. So I'll just punch in my password so and say next, All right? And, and let me review. You can either review first or you go first. For me, I don't need to review because I know what I just wrote, what I just prepared. But if you have never seen it, you want to review first, okay? For me, it's just going to go. So if you click go, it'll take you to where exactly you need to click the sign, the word sign in blue. So click that. And uh, there are two places I need to sign. So this is the second place. Oh, actually, there are three places. Oh, there are four places. Yep. Apparently, there are four places because uh, the SPSA also requires my signature. So I'm going to click on that. So finished. As you can see, it's a very, very quick process. Now, once I finish, and uh, now you can review it, but usually I don't because I know what's in there. Right, so I'm going to exit it. Okay. Exit here. 